now the Justice Department reportedly finding inconsistencies in Fulton County DA Fannie Willis's use of federal grant money. Yeah. Willis fired her, the whistleblower who warned the DA's office was attempting to misuse $488,000. This was a federal grant. She wanted to use it to pay for computers and travel. I don't know if she was traveling with her boyfriend or not, but the DOJ told the Washington Free Beacon the grant is plagued with reporting discrepancies, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. No. God bless the whistleblower came forward. We've talked with the whistleblower. Uh, she's given information to the press, to us. Now the Department of Justice is looking into this. All kinds of problems with Fonnie Willis and this ridiculous uh, 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 investigation that she's run on President Trump and others and the charges she's brought forward. I mean, you got the whole thing with Nathan Wade. P taxpayer money going to Nathan Wade. He was traveling to Washington to meet with the DOJ, the White House, the January 6th committee, all in this effort to go after President Trump. And now we have this. It looks like misspending federal grant dollars. Uh, God bless the whistleblower who came forward and let us understand uh, what's going on here. Well, you Show me the money. Live shot of the Fulton County Executive Suite for the District Attorney. Shout out, everybody! I love black people! It's gonna be, I, I hope this goes to trial. Please, please let it go to trial. Lord, I've seen, I've seen what you've done for other people. Please do this for me. Allow Donald Trump to sit on a stand across from Fannie Willis. <laughs> Please let it happen. Okay, baby. Today is Friday, April 12th, 2024. DOJ unmasks inconsistencies with Fannie Willis's use of federal funds. We've been telling you for a long time this is going to be a very bad thing for Fannie Willis. And Big Fannie's about to get spanked. New poll shows Donald Trump nearly doubles support among black men and women since 2020. Jack Brewer joins the show. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. So uh, you may have noticed that there's a blip in the news radar of H1N1 virus ripping across like various cow herds and uh, being transmitted to humans or something. Hey, listen, I, you know, I got to tell you, try as much as we can not to scare tactic, this kind of stuff, or to amplify um the kind of stuff that we don't think is at, like the kind of stuff that we're not we're not quite sure like who's pushing it and why but h1n1 uh is this going to be the black swan event you're seeing like the sprinklings okay in the news cycle is this going to be it what are they going to do they got to come up with something things aren't going great ladies and gentlemen the wellness company can keep you protected from whatever little plan plan pandemic pandemic they have uh cooking in whatever lab they got Ladies and gentlemen, they, their kits are emergency ready assortments of life saving antibiotics, antiviral, antiparasitics. You keep you and your family safe for whatever globalists throw at us next. To order, go to twc.health slash Benny. That's twc.health slash Benny. Offer code Benny for 10% off. Offer code Benny for 10% off. Okay, baby, we got some interesting things here. Now, we have been talking to you for quite a while about the real threat to Fannie Willis. And we've seen and been disappointed that Fannie Willis wasn't disqualified. Disqualification of half. Got it? Okay, so you got two guys, they commit a robbery together, and only one of them goes to prison. The judge says, you're both guilty, you go to prison, you get to walk free, and continue to defraud the public. Don't make no sense. So maybe Fannie Willis will be disqualified. That's on appeal right now. But I've been predicting for a long time that this is really the thorn in the paw, as it were, the bee in the bonnet that will get Fannie in the end, right up the rear end, uh, is going to be a bad night for Fannie, wherever she lays her head, in her bag, in her pillowcase full of money. That's the way I see it. A, a pillowcase full of money. Here we go. So there is something that comes with federal dollars. All right. It's called strings attached. 
And if you misuse federal money, the, what that does is it means that you are going to be charged federally. And that's no good. That's no fun. The federal government isn't somebody to play around with. Try not paying taxes, for instance, right? And uh, try waving a 25 cent American flag at your at the U.S. Capitol. Try it, right? Don't try it. In fact, don't don't try any of those things, because um, f- federal prosecution and the effing around with federal money is a big fat no no. And so uh, this is going to be something that I think is going to really catch up with Big Fanny. Big Fanny apparently misused federal funds, fired whistleblowers, broke a bunch of federal laws. And those are the kind of laws that, well, ladies and gentlemen, get people in big trouble. There are a large phalanx of federal prosecutors all around the country. Uh, they're regional and local. So it's not like in D.C. It doesn't all run out of D.C. A lot of these local guys. Brett Tolman was a federal prosecutor in Utah. And he's based and he's on our show all the time. And he was able to bring like thousands of federal cases and be like the the lawman, right, in Utah for the feds. So these things are localized. And I don't know who exactly the federal prosecutors are in Fulton County, but this is dangerous territory for Fannie Willis because she's in a jurisdiction that is a Republican jurisdiction. And presumably the prosecutor would reflect that. And so this brings us very nicely to the news, ladies and gentlemen, that Fannie Willis is in fact potentially misusing federal funds. DOJ unmasks inconsistency in Fannie Willis' use of federal grant funds. Let's read. The Justice Department said on Friday that it unmasked inconsistencies in federal county prosecutor Fannie Willis' use of federal funds, confirming whistleblower allegations. Uh Uh-oh. Willis previously fired the whistleblower who alleged that Fulton County office mishandled nearly $500,000 of federal grant money to pay for swag, computers, and travel. Oh my, travel to where? Well, cruise ships, Napa Valley trips. We've seen the receipts. It's the same gang that the Justice Department, it's the same grant for uh, correction that the Justice Department's office and the justice program now says is plagued with reporting discrepancies from Willis's office. The Washington Free Beacon reporter Andrew Kerr reported on Wednesday. Let's go ahead and read that report. The Justice Department did not provide any further details on the nature of Willis's reporting inconsistencies in the $500,000 worth of federal grants, which was earmarked for the creation of a Center for Youth Empowerment and Gang Prevention in Atlanta. The grant ended in September 2023, but the center never opened. Oh, okay. So here's your problem. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm no tax attorney, but if the federal government take a step back. If your mom gives you $5 to go down to the corner store and buy dad a sandwich and you come back with packs of Bazooka Joe bubble gum, then you're going to have a bad day. You're going to go to spanking in your big fanny. And so this is effectively what's going on here. Fanny Willis was paid to go create a gang prevention center, this enormous amount of crime in Fulton County. And then a shocking amount of crime in Fulton County. It's one of the most dangerous places to live on earth. Uh, Like Mogadishu is safer. And so this is something that the feds give money to, right? Let's try and keep America safe. There's some some federal dollars that are wisely used. And like something to keep people from engaging in violent behavior. All right, fine. I I guess I'm okay with that. All right, on its face. That money uh, never went to that center. Well, what's that about? Let's read. Justice Department is coordinating with Willis's office to fix the grant reporting inconsistencies and made an ongoing House Judiciary Committee investigation into Willis's use of federal funds. Committee Chairman Jim Jordan subpoenaed Willis in February for the records related to the $500,000 in federal grant and whistleblower allegations made by former Willis staffer Amanda Timpson, who was listed as the grant director until she was abruptly fired. Oh, why was she fired? She was fired because she was blowing the whistle on the misuse of funds. Jordan threatened to hold Willis in contempt of Congress on March 14th after the district attorney responded with a spina narrow set of documents that had nothing to do with Timpson's whistleblower allegations. Willis wrote in response that Jordan's demands were unreasonable and uncustomary. Uh, And this was a, they were trying to stop my prosecution of President Trump. Right. 
Uh, in a Friday statement published on in a Friday statement, DOJ spokesperson admitted to, uh, to that inconsistencies appeared in the review of Willis's office during our review of the award. To respond to this inquiry, we have noticed inconsistencies with Fulton County, uh, and we are working with them uh, on their report accordingly. Okay. Well, what does that mean? What this means is that they, based on Jim Jordan's investigation of Fannie Willis, uh, they're saying, oh, oh no. Oh no, we got uh, something. We got to charge her. She gone, she's going to go to jail. She misused federal funds. She fired a whistleblower who said she was going to do that. The whistleblower has all the documentation. And here's the backstory. If you had to give me a sentence, what is the sentence theme? Once I told him about his respectfully and in an email about his lack of leadership and the fact that he wanted to do things with grants that were impossible. And I kept telling him, like, we can't do that. And questioning stuff, he would take me off projects, tell people I wasn't doing what I was supposed to because I questioned him. Because I understood, I helped write that grant. I knew what was in that grant. He told everybody in front of Crystal, Deontay, everybody, we're going to get MacBooks. We're going to do that. We're going to get swag. We're going to use it for travel. I said, you cannot do that. It's a very, very specific grant. Took me off. I questioned Junior DA. There's kids in there from out of the, the, um, the county, all this. Took me off Junior DA. I did not want to do it. He made it look as if I wasn't doing what I needed to do because I questioned him. Because so, I knew for a fact Mr. Cuffey respectfully did not know what he was doing. So, period. So I respect that is your assessment. Um, it was clear to me that you and Mr. Cuffey were not getting along. And I'm not saying that your assessment is wrong. I want you to really listen to the words I'm saying. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's really listen to the words that she's saying, shall we? Because this is the whistleblower, obviously, at the center of these allegations that Fannie Willis misused federal funds. It's a very, very important story, considering the fact that Fannie Willis's prosecution of Donald Trump is continuing apace. Apparently, this trial is going, this is going to go to trial in the summer, right as the campaign heats up. So let's listen in on the private recording. And by the way, uh, private recordings, very bad when these private recordings are coming out of your office. Right, and you're the prosecutor, and you're threatening to fire this whistleblower, and then you go and fire her. Mm, here we go. Puffy, and this is my personal opinion to one woman to another, is dangerous to your administration. He tells people when I reached out to you, he told me, "Oh, um, you think your word is safe?" Um, and exactly when you reached out to Miss uh, Willis, she called me and told me. She told me everything. So once you reach out to her, she's going to reach up back out to me. So I didn't even go to HR. Oh, because he put Dexter's something? name on my PDP, and I didn't even feel safe going to anybody. Can I tell you something? Mm hmm I have three supervisors that have failed in this building. What's interesting to me, because I'm in a learning curve too, they each pretend to have a relationship with me that they do not have. Mm -hmm. I guess that's an intimidation tactic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you felt that way, but you, Dexter certainly don't have no relationship with uh, right. Michael Cuffey. You were safe to go those places. So intimidation tactics, a whistleblower straight up saying uh, you're misusing funds in your office, and that whistleblower was then promptly fired. Um, that's not great. That's not a good look. And this is something that's clearly going to be a cleanup operation for the DOJ. Now, here's the original report uh, here from the Free Beacon. Did great reporting here. Fannie Willis axed employee who blew the whistle on misuse of federal funds. Embattled Georgia DA has a pattern of ethical violations and abuse of power and misusing funds, whistleblower says. So we're going to see how this plays out, but this is exactly how people get into big trouble. And this is where people go to prison, uh, federal prison. And if you are handed this check from the federal government, know that there are major consequences that come for people that abuse that money or squander that money. Apparently, it was used on swag and computers for their office and trips for her office. So we will see. Interestingly enough, Fannie Willis, on the campaign trail, uh, literally promised not to do this. She also promised not to sleep with members of her staff. So there's one broken promise. Here's the next. 
guarantee you is with my reputation, with my community ties, I am going to be able to attract the best and the brightest minds to that office. You're sitting with someone today that actually wants to make a difference because they deserve a DA that won't have sex with his employees, because they deserve a DA that won't put money in their own pocket when it should go to benefit children, because we deserve better. We, we love that clip. We just love that clip. Hey, this is why we have such a great research team at the program. We just really, we just love being able to go back through the internet archives and find little bits, little bits of gold like that. They deserve someone who won't have sex with their employees. Mm, they deserve it. They deserve somebody that won't steal from their office and won't misuse funds. Like for instance, when I took all the money that was supposed to be for homicides in Fulton County, get me some numbers on homicides in Fulton County. Let's find that. Let's find out. Let's find homicides in Fulton County. Uh, what, what exactly are our rates here? We got issues in Fulton County. They use the homicide money to prosecute Donald Trump. That's right. The only thing that Donald Trump was murdering was a strawberry shake at Chick-fil-A earlier this week in Fulton County. And, um, mm, that was a killer one. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this, this is, this is again, a total dumpster fire. Let's go. And that, that is their argument in their reply briefs that they filed, um, in court that they have inherent authority. They don't have to comply with the county ordinances, don't have to comply with the statute. Um, so they don't have to comply with our state statute that they have. Once they're awarded the budget, they can use that budget. However, I mean, it, how their, how their motion and I, and I'm happy to send the motion, um, it's public record, but how their motion argued it was if they get $5 million, they can pay that to one person if they want, um, as long as the you know because the voters authorized her to do that so the county or their position is the county authorizes a budget and she can pretty much has inherent authority to do it however even though she specifically asked for the money to prosecute backlogged homicide cases in atlanta yes okay um got it okay so she's taking the money that was supposed to be used on homicides which could they could totally need they could totally use it in Fulton County, not sure if you've uh, ever looked at the Fulton County crimegrade.org map, Fulton County, Georgia, murder rates. Let's go ahead and look here, shall we? Okay, overall rate is a D minus for Fannie Will. This is Fannie Willis's district. So Fulton County is kind of that that like area around around Atlanta right there. That's that's like Fulton County. Effectively, everything in the red is Fulton County, and red doesn't mean good in this map. Uh, red means very, very bad things in this map. It means an F grade. An F grade means the rate of murder is much higher than the average U.S. county. Fulton County is in the first percentile uh, for safety, meaning 99% of other counties in America are safer and 1% of counties are more dangerous. Oh, okay, so it's in the top 1%, but in a bad way. So it's in the top 1% of most dangerous counties for crime. So these are. this is... This is Fannie Willis's, this is Fannie Willis's district. This is what Fannie Willis is spending her time on. The rate of murder in Fulton County is 0 0.01873 per 1,000 residents during a standard year. The people who live in Fulton County generally consider uh, the northeast part of the county to be the safest. Uh, your chance of being a victim of murder in Fulton County may be as high as 1 in 1,800. Got it. Okay. So one in every 1800 people gets murdered under Fannie Willis's watch. Got it. Got it. Uh, the F grade means that it is in the top 1% of most unsafe places to live in America. These are the people going after Trump. These are the people that say orange man bad. And as you can see here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, there's something way more bad that is orange and also red. And that is the murder rate in Fulton County. So they stole money from the prosecution of homicides in order to go after Donald Trump. Got it. Also, they've been able to hire somebody. Think, consider it this way. So let's say that you're a criminal and you wish to not be caught for murder. You wish to get away with murder, as the old saying goes. Um, you'd probably want the biggest dumbass uh, to be elected 
your district attorney because then you'd be getting away with murder. You you don't want the smartest person. You you want the dumbest person. And that is exactly what you have with with Fannie Willis. Uh, this is just a just a little just a little snippet of Fannie Willis and how she behaves on the stand. And where um, when did he come to, I guess, the condo? I'm not sure what you called it, condo apartment. Um, would he come and stay at that condo or visit you there? I'm sorry, visit you there. What condo, what apartment? I want to be clear. So not your house. I know you classified one as house and one as condo. So I'm trying to use those terms. So um, there's been more. That, see, what you don't understand is because of this case, I got to move. And so I, I need to, if you could ask a more precise question, yes, please give me the time period. <laughs> Mr. Wade visits you at the place you laid your head. When has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Judge, and this, it, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. Ms. Willis, Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. Be back in five. <laughs> Where's all my paper? Throw my paper. All right, they took my paper away. All right. They ro Rolls Royce was getting tired of me throwing my paper. Ah, here's my paper. Ah! It's just too much fun. Too much fun. I'll pick it up. I promise. Okay. I'm like a guy who's on the internet, who has an internet show. And I think it's fun to throw a paper. I'm not prosecuting anyone. I wasn't elected by anyone. And I'm not sitting here trying to go after anybody. And I would find it ridiculous if I was throwing paper day and night on the show. Yet Fannie Willis wearing a dress backwards with an upside down American flag and a stream of paper starts chucking it around the courtroom in in such a wild manner that the judge, who's a Fannie Willis donor and who worked for Fannie Willis back in the day, uh, is saying, OK, we're going to take a timeout. <laughs> we're going to put you in timeout. Because everything that they did was such garbage on the stand that the judge was I, based on my reading of the trials and we watched them live. The judge is there to protect her. The judge was there trying to protect them, protect them from their own stupidity because these, these people are dumb and because they're elected by people who are really happy that they don't go after crimes and they're going after Donald Trump. Or are they? It's quite interesting. When Donald Trump goes to Fulton County, it's a different story. A really important final like little cruise through like the super smart people in this Trump prosecution, the lawyer for Nathan Wade in his own text messages blowing up the case against his client, confirming that Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade had a relationship in writing to the Trump prosecution. And when faced uh, with those pieces of flaming evidence, his response is perfect. Okay, in Defense Exhibit 26, which I showed you last time, was two pages of text messages between you and Ms. Merchant, correct? Correct. Right. Now, the first page starts off by saying, Ms. Merchant, like just date, don't hire him. Do you think it started before she hired him? You see that? Yes, I see it. Yes. And your response to that was absolutely I'm correct. Gonna, I'm going to object, ask and answer in cumulative. All right. So uh, after the word absolutely, you on your own said it started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. They met at the municipal court CLE conference. That's what you said, correct? That is correct. I love this. Oh, dang. <laughs> Here's a text. Here's a text. Just date. Don't hire him. Absolutely. Oh, dang. You got me. I literally, I literally told. These are the smart lawyers of Fulton County. These are the geniuses of Fulton County. These are the people literally in charge. The top law enforcement official in Fulton County is the district attorney. These are the people in charge. And they're straight up telling the prosecuting attorneys here in this case and giving them evidence 
like demonstra empirical evidence, like hard evidence to use in a trial that Fannie Willis is banging her staff and is using the taxpayer dollars to go on lavish vacations with Nathan's hot dog. Oh, dang. We've slowed it down for you. It's our favorite. It's our favorite thing. I continue to I, I continue to ask for the ESPN instant replay uh, thing here. We'll get it one of these days. Here we go. We, we, we need to be able to do instant replays on this program. Here's the instant replay of my favorite moment in court history, actually. Oh. <laughs> Rolls Royce, am I going to get an instant replay? Okay, all right, all right. We're going to get an instant replay, ladies and gentlemen. Hire, we're hiring more editors. We're do, we're going to do it. So they're not sending their best, right? As they said, OJ Simpson died this week. Guy got away with murder. Guy got away with murder. Luckily, he didn't have these judges. He would have died in prison if he had had these. Uh, if he had these judges and this clown car from Fulton County, and what's a more important case, the OJ case or Donald Trump, like trying a president for what? For questioning an election like Hillary Clinton's done, like Al Gore did, like Democrats have done throughout all time, like Republicans have done throughout all time. For, for, for like saying that there needs to be like a, an honest count in an election like everyone has done since the dawn of like, Adams versus Jefferson. Maybe the last time there wasn't a, a presidential election, it was, it was George Washington running unopposed and George Washington became president, our first president. I think that was probably the last time that somebody didn't say, oh, there's, there's some type of fraud or irregularities in the election. Some party, right? Didn't say that. It's literally protected by the First Amendment and it's also protected by the Electoral Count Act which has stipulations that have been used before. Amazing clip from Van Jones on this, actually, before the 2020 election, I'm pretty sure. ALX, maybe you can marvel us all and go go get that. Uh, there's this clip of Van Jones explaining the Electoral Count Act and how there were actually times in American history, I think it was Van Buren, where they used it and they had different slates of electors and they switched states where they couldn't figure out who won and they were able to actually like get a winner across the finish line by flipping a bunch of states and having different electors come through, roll through. It's, it's really is remarkable how quickly they change on a dime when they think they can put Donald Trump in prison. Luckily for us, and as ever, Donald Trump is being prosecuted by the stupidest possible people who can't answer, of course, the toughest legal question that legal theorists and Harvard lawyers and Ivy League law professors have been pondering over for millennia, the toughest question any lawyer can possibly be asked on the stand, have you ever been to a cabin? Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever? Ever. The hardest time we've been together, thought of a thing would last forever. Through thick and thin, good or bad, all I was happy, never, never sad. Now it's all gone so no. No. It'll never not be funny. It'll never not be funny. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the team. That's the team that's going after Trump. Now they've locked away two of the guys, right? So they've made one of them drop off the case, got rid of Nathan's hot dog. Uh, Terrence Bradley humiliated and who knows where that guy is probably in an insane asylum somewhere rocking back and forth. Fannie Willis, not looking great, not doing well. Uh, clearly, clearly having a, uh, a bad time. You've seen her lately. She's been fr a bit frazzled. And so here we are. These are the people going after Trump. So we'll see what happens, but we do one thing. And it's something that we as a show are the only ones that have ever like really z z zeroed in on this. And we look forward to going to Fulton County with our flak jackets and our, our bulletproof vests. Um, and you know, maybe a failing some bodyguards, but to do some reporting there about what people actually think about Donald Trump. Cause I think that'd be quite, uh, illuminating. We see clips like this and we like, we saw this the second Trump was arrested. You know, this clip's going on, this clip's going on like a year old and we've been talking about it and, and we're the only show that ever plays it. 
And it's a authentic clip of Donald Trump driving through Fulton County, what is clearly a, a quite poor part of Fulton County. You can see the sidewalk there needs repair and all, you know, various stuff. The, the, the gas station on the corner and the power lines, you know, the bars on the windows and so on. And you hear people cheering for Trump, dancing for Trump, saying, free my boy Trump. And it's Fanny, you done effed up, that lady just yelled. Look at that. She said. Oh, yeah. And this this clip sort of illuminated for us, like, how off these people are and how they're not going to be able to pull this over on a population that actually loves Donald Trump. And we're going to prove that in just a second here with some brand new poll numbers for Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump uh, deciding to do exactly what he does best all the time and go directly at those who are attacking him. Here's Donald Trump's most recent uh, uh, material on Fannie Willis. Fannie, lick your ass. And not only that, all these local cases like Fannie, Fannie. It's spelled Fannie. It's spelled Fanny like your ass, right, Fanny? But when she became DA, she decided to add a little French, a little fancy, Fanny. Fanny and, you know, Fanny and Mr. and Mrs. Wade, which his wife did not appreciate. His wife didn't appreciate. Can you imagine these two people trying to take down a very popular, I'm a very popular president. I mean, again, I got more votes than any sitting president in history. I, we have these two lowlifes trying to take down a president of the United States. But, you know, equally badly, they went after 26 people. They wanted to make it 48 people. They had some senators that these guys know very well who were indicted, who were ready to be indicted, and somebody stopped it. And they wanted to find out what the hell is going on in Georgia. What's going on with the elections that it's so crazy? And they almost got indicted for that. Wow. So people have been asking questions. You're going to love this. Why do you tune in? You tune in because we have a, uh, we have we have one superpower on this program. And that is that we are super attention payers. We pay attention. We we are super attention people. We are alive. We are living and we pay attention. And we notice trends and patterns. And we we have this like sort of encyclopedic knowledge, especially our production team, which deserves an enormous amount of credit for this, uh, of times when uh, what the, the time we're living in doesn't really comport with the time of just like a few seconds ago. Like Fannie Willis running for her campaign saying, I won't bang my staff and I won't embezzle money. Well, you done both, Fannie. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the clip of Van Jones. This is unbelievable. Because remember what Donald Trump just talked about there, funny, like your ass. She added some French when she ran for office. What Donald Trump just did there is talk about how everyone has questioned elections throughout all time. In fact, there's literal rules, laws passed about how you question elections so that you can question as many elections as you want. It's our right to question elections. If there's things we can't say, we are slaves. Do you want to be a slave or a free man or woman? You, like, you don't think the government lies to you? Check out this lie. To my knowledge, this was right before the 2020 election, ironically, where former Obama employee Van Jones walks on set and is like, here's how we protest the election. Here's how we flip states. Here's how we do different electors. All of the fuss, every one of these things they're trying to put Trump in jail for in Georgia. Every single one. Should lock up Van Jones too? You're going to lock up Van Jones? Huh? Huh? Here we go. Vice President, federal law says all election disputes at the state level need to be wrapped up by December 8th so the electors can cast their ballots on December the 14th. Now, each state governor has got to certify the electors votes and then send them on to Congress. So the results aren't official until the new Congress counts those ballots on January the 6th. Now, it's usually a straightforward process, but let's say 
one of the candidates questions the legitimacy of the state's count. The governor could choose not to certify the electors' votes, or, though this is really unlikely, the state legislature could decide to contest the election and send a different count to Congress, meaning Congress could end up with no results or with competing results from the same state. Now that's a violation of federal law, so Congress would no longer have to honor that state's electors at all. Now, the House and the Senate can then decide which result is valid or throw out the votes from that state altogether. Now, I know you think I'm crazy, but this actually happened. It was 1876, shortly after the Civil War. Samuel Tilden won the popular vote, but there were 19 electoral votes in dispute. Congress had to step in and broker a compromise. Rutherford Hayes was eventually named president in exchange for the end of Reconstruction and the withdrawal of federal troops from the South. Here's where things get even more interesting. If a candidate still doesn't have a majority of electoral votes by the end of this process, the 12th Amendment says the House of Representatives decides who will be president and each state delegation gets one vote. The Senate picks a vice president. No matter what happens, somebody has got to take the oath of office on January 20th. God. So help, so help me God. God. If both the president and the vice president are still undecided, the Speaker of the House temporarily gets that job. Oh, 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 oh. wait! <laughs> ah, I, 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 delete, 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 quick, delete, 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 delete. Wait, so like, there's we can legitimately contest elections, and governors can refuse to certify fraudulent elections, and should it's actually their right, their obligation to the Constitution. Wait a second, so you can just reject the slate of electors that were sent in. Congress can just reject them. Oh, that's weird. So CNN's, CNN's actually in favor of this, or at the very least, like CNN thinks this is a this is a tactic that's been used successfully before for political leverage in the country when you had shady elections and there were a bunch of disputed electoral votes and a disputed process and somebody different became president <laughs> than the person who run the popular vote. Did Samuel Tilden get 81 million votes? We promise, we promise he must bring. Samuel Tilden campaigned in his underwear from his basement, drooling with the geese honking behind him. We promise you, he definitely, definitely got 81 million votes. Yeah. So you so so that was that so that was CNN straight up saying that everything Donald Trump did was legal. Where'd that clip go? See ya. Bye. Out of here. You'll never see that clip again on CNN. Luckily, we got it. You'll never find it again on CNN. Luckily, we have it saved. That's what they were saying right before the election. Whew. We uh, have the energy, of course, to uh, hunt down those kind of things and to humiliate our enemies on this program um, because we drink our delicious blackout coffee. Blackout coffee being drank out of our uh, Benny Brigade mug here made out of a tank shell. Kind of awesome. Uh, this is the coffee that fuels our program. There are woke coffee companies out there. They hate you. They hate your freedoms. And they certainly don't want to give you the energy to fight the communists because, well, they are the communists. We drink blackout coffee because we need that energy and we want to carry that energy forward every single day on our show. It is family owned and it is freedom first. Blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Use the coupon code Benny for 20% off your first order. Blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Be awake, not woke. My favorite tagline, ladies and gentlemen. Be awake, not woke. So we got some really cool news for you. Election update, Wall Street Journal. Donald Trump has doubled his support among black men and women since 2020. Hot diggity damn. Uh, maybe this doesn't come as a surprise to you. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but it certainly is something that is shocking to the greater overall political zeitgeist. In case you wonder why the border remains open, and in case you wonder why they wish for every person who has illegally crossed our border to vote for the people that are giving them handouts, uh, this is why. Because because Joe Biden is doing historically ba bad. I mean, w what we mean historically is since the polls started, Joe Biden is doing this bad with regularly communities that vote in block in mass 
for Democrats. If Democrats don't win 90% of the black vote, they can't win. You don't win. You have to have those like dense urban areas uh, in order to like flip, in order to make states like Illinois, which is a red state, every county in Illinois is red, except for one. You have to be able to flip that state. Have you ever been to upstate New York? It's like Trump country. You ever driven around Pennsylvania? Trump country in every direction. Literally one city, Philadelphia, Chicago, Manhattan, one city flips the entire state. They have to have those dense population centers in order to outweigh and outpace the entire rest of the state. That's how they win. So these are crisis numbers, ladies and gentlemen, for the left. And this is why the left is losing their minds over Donald Trump. Donald Trump yesterday went to a Chick-fil-A in Fulton County of all places. Now, this is why we weren't shocked. We cover that clip of people cheering for Trump in Fulton County right after the mugshot, because um, it's one, fascinating to see how Donald Trump actually connects with real people. How, why are these people cheering for a billionaire that just got a mugshot to try and arrest him? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because Donald Trump inspires hope in people. And Joe Biden inspires depression. And that was on clear display and we now have the backstory directly from the Trump campaign. So we reached out and got the Trump campaign to actually explain to us, like, the backstory is that this Chick-fil-A was on Donald Trump's route for the mugshot. And so when Donald Trump went into this Chick-fil-A, he, he, he saw it during his mugshot arrest, and he saw people cheering for him. And so he said, I want to come back to the people who cheered for me during my mugshot. You see here Donald Trump talking to a lady uh, who has a nose ring. So this hourly worker who has a nose ring at Chick-fil-A is there cheering for Donald Trump. What kind of a world are we living in? I mean, it's really inspiring. It's really special, okay? Really, really special. And you see the way that Donald Trump obviously embraces, I and mean, quite literally, the people Hello. of Fulton County. It's a great, great American franchise, Chick-fil-A. It is. It's a great franchise. The owner is a great man who is a member of one of my clubs, and he's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, they do very well. They're closed on Sunday. The Lord's chicken. That's the Lord's chicken. You're right. It's good chicken, too. Yeah, good to see you. Thank man. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So this is Donald Trump saying it's the Lord's chicken. This is my favorite part, actually, of the, the trip, is when a supporter of Trump, who I think was just eating was just eating Chick-fil-A there, uh, like, runs up and hugs him. Check this out. I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. We support you. We support you, Mike. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, something uh, interesting just happened in the studio where uh, we were offline for just a second. So I had to jump back in. Here we are. Good? Good. Okay, let's keep going. So that's my favorite, that's my favorite moment uh, from that event. And that same woman was on Fox just seconds ago this morning talking about what it was like to give Donald Trump a massive hug after saying, hey, the media is lying. Media is lying about you. We love you. Here we go. So you told the president when you were hugging him, I don't care what the media says, we support you. Tell me what you meant by that. I am so glad that is the first question you asked me. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, in the excitement of everything, I wasn't able to really relay my message, yeah. but um, the general consensus or social media would have you thinking that if President Trump were to show up to the HBCU campuses or walk around the ABC community that like some angry mob would form or a riot would ensue and that he would not be welcome. And clearly the sentiment in that room the other day was the complete opposite. He was very welcome. People were excited to see him. People showed up in support of him. And people, um, of course, were from all four institutions within the AEC, um, the local HBCU community in Atlanta. And they all showed up in support of them. So it's actually kind of crazy to see people in an uproar when all four institutions were legitimately represented and all four institutions were represented by said students who wanted to support President Trump. You know, Michaela. And I really appreciate that we were able to not only let him know that regardless of what social media says, you know, I know they're trying to make us think we're supposed to hate you, but we don't. 
And additionally, it was a learning experience for my students because they were able to see and experience firsthand how the media can warp the perception of an opinion or a person. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's heartwarming, right? It's heartwarming. But the libs are very, very angry about this. In just a moment, we'll play you a Jimmy Kimmel clip just to show you exactly how much they hate this. We predicted this, by the way. We predicted. We predicted that they would find time, they would find the capacity to hate on these people. They would find the capacity to hate on Donald Trump reaching into the lives of people who presumably, I mean, if you're working an hourly wage at Chick-fil-A, it's, honor, it's a noble and honorable thing, but like, you typically don't have a lot of billionaires coming in, clapping you on the back, hugging you. Some of those powerful people on earth, some of those, the, the most famous people on earth making your day. We predicted that Libs would find a way to see that this and salt it. And huh, my goodness, did we find the clip from Jimmy Kimmel. But first, a little more peace and love for your timeline. Uh, that beautiful woman continuing her Fox interview, talking about what it was like to give Donald Trump that big, warm hug. Tell me about the former president and his policies. What is it about him that is gravitating these young people toward the president? And a lot of people, traditionally Republicans, don't do well in black America. But a lot of young black Americans like the former president. What is it about him? I think, and this is a sentiment I get a lot coming from the young people themselves, yeah. is that they feel like he's honest. They feel like this is somebody who, while we might not agree with how he says things, how he goes about things, at least he's telling us what it is. We don't feel like this is a snake in the grass waiting for his chance to bite us. This is somebody who's telling us, this is what my plan is. Here's how I plan to execute it. Here's the people involved. And here's how you can get involved. Um, so they just feel like he's more relatable. And I don't say that to say that, like, you know, they all relate to him. But again, he gives you that relatable feeling to where it's like, hey, I'm just like you. You know me. This is what I this is what you said you wanted. Here's what I'm gonna try to do about it. They really feel like this is somebody who's talking to them and not just saying what they want to hear. Such a good point. So what is the superpower of Donald Trump? Superpower of Donald Trump is his ability to make you feel big. His ability as one of the most powerful people on earth, all right? And the most famous man living today. Inarguable. Inarguable. The most famous man living today is Donald Trump. And when Donald Trump walks in with that energy, and he's been a celebrity for 50 years, right? And this is just the superpower that he wields. And he talks to you, and he hugs you, and he looks directly at you, and he claps you on the shoulder, and he grabs you by the arm. That makes you feel, that raises you up. I've seen it happen. I've had it happen to me. And it's something that's really, really profound. And that, that uplifts, and you hear it there in the comments. That just uplifts people. And there's not a lot of uplifting going on. Joe Biden could never, right? And that's why the libs seethe. That's why the libs freak at clips like this. Because they know that they are helpless. And their guy don't got it, right? And this is why you have our salt that live of the day, Jimmy Kimmel. We knew it. We knew it. We predicted it. We tweeted it, actually. We tweeted it. We put it up. I just want to show you that we were right. We were right. We were right. We put it up. Can we, get that? Can we grab that tweet with the photo? Um, we said, we said the libs are going to find a way to hate on this. They're going to find a way. The media can't understand it. It hurts their brains. It breaks their brains. So they'll censor it. They'll get it ripped off the internet and they'll try and degrade these people. But it's really quite simple. Donald Trump be brings people hope. Joe Biden makes people depressed. That's it. And boy, were we right. Jimmy Kimmel, our salt that lib of the day. Jimmy Kimmel, such a salty lib and so deserves extra sodium. Ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy Kimmel on the verge of tears talking about Donald Trump bringing happiness and joy to an impoverished community that is dangerous and scary to live in. Quite frankly, we just went through the murder numbers there in Fulton County. Um, Jimmy Kimmel has never done anything nice for anybody like this. Jimmy Kimmel has never like stopped and made anyone's day as an hourly worker. And so he deserves our salt for our salt that lib of the day. <laughs> Just a 
former president muttering, I did everything, I did everything to himself at a fast food chicken restaurant. Nothing unusual there. I would have given anything for somebody to ask him right on the spot, name one black university, okay? <laughs> and let's have a look at that. We <laughs> pose for that photo. I would like to see what that looked like. Oh, yeah, there you go. That Look at that. <laughs> Man of the people. Joe Biden invested $7 billion in historically black colleges and universities, but Donald Trump, who lost Georgia last time, believes bigly and strongly that this time he deserves to win there. Why should the people of Atlanta vote for you? Because I've done more for the people of Atlanta than any other president by far. I've done more for the black community than any other president since Abraham Lincoln, and maybe including Abraham Lincoln, frankly, but since Abraham Lincoln. I don't know. Who, who is this person? The fact that he's able to say the words, I've done more for the black community than maybe Abraham Lincoln, and then not start laughing hysterically, it's incredible. He might as well be saying, I am a black person. It would be equally preposterous. This is... Might as well be saying, I'm a black person, says Jimmy Kimmel, as the crowd of lobotomized seals clap. Okay, because they have to have an applause line. They have to have a giant split. You have read in these studios, these Hollywood studios, they have to have these giant signs that say, you will clap now, seal. I found that last line particularly interesting, that Jimmy Kimmel would attack Donald Trump for fake playing a black guy, considering the fact that Jimmy Kimmel built his entire career on fake playing a black guy. In what? used to be a career ender going in blackface on camera, but not just blackface for Jimmy Kimmel, black body, black hands, black feet. Here, ladies and gentlemen, from the archives again, is Jimmy Kimmel doing exactly what he just accused Donald Trump of doing, playing a black guy. Yeah. Sometime at night, call below, look up in sky and say, what the hell going on up there? Do UFO live on other planet, phoning home like E.T.? Come along, read on TV about white people getting deducted by aliens, sticking all kind of hell up their butt. And that's a damn thing. Now, come along, never seen no flying saucer himself, but if he do, that's going to be a spooky time. That's why Carl Malone say government got to step up and give 102% to keeping them little green man off this here earth. Because the day them dudes stick something up Carl Malone butt, that's going to, well, that ain't going to be no good time for nobody. Especially Carl Malone butt. Listen up, E.T. You better stay the hell back. Nanu, nanu. Until next time. Wow. This year, Carl Malone. Well, well, well. I guess people in glass houses shouldn't throw basketballs in blackface. And, and black body, by the way. Can we do the full body shot here? Just one more time. Jimmy Kimmel went out of his way to paint his legs black, his hands black, his arms black, his black face. Black face, of course, absolutely cancelable. The, the, the peak, the zenith of offensive and something that mustn't ever be done, uh, ever. And here's Jimmy Kimmel doing exactly that. Last night, going on a monologue about how Donald Trump is trying to play a black guy. Wow. Pretty remarkable how when you just take a step back and look at Fannie Willis, how she campaigned, CNN, what they said before the 2020 election about legalities of challenging elections, or Jimmy Kimmel's old comedy routines, you'll see that all of these people are full of sheer Try not to swear on this shit program. Try family friendly program. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a family friendly time. And it was a family friendly time when Donald Trump was at this Chick-fil-A. It was inspiring. It was neat. It's called retail politics. It's what you should see during politics. People being uplifted. People hearing something that gives them hope. And what was the final thing that Trump said that really gave them hope? What's the clip that really went thermonuclear viral? Donald Trump saying and, and campaigning in real time with black voters, we need to get rid of Biden. And when Donald Trump says that, the reaction to just the people, the run of the mill people who were out and about at Chick-fil-A that day in the afternoon, okay, 
Uh, listen to the response. Can't fake this. Yeah, can my friend Dom get one too? Yes. This is, she's fun right Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Yes. We're going to get rid of Biden. Yeah. 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 Bye, bye, Biden. Bye, bye, sleepy. He is the worst president in the history of the United States, and he's horrible to the black community. Like it or not. Been that way since a senator. Community bad. And check out his record in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Check out his record in the 1990s. Your economic looks for us. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, opportunity. Opportunity for us. Yep. Yep. Best job numbers ever. The first step egg. Let's yeah, talk about it. And yeah. again, yeah. the yeah. colleges and universities. Yeah. Yeah. I just get the whole thing now. Yeah. 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 I got you. Thank you. Can I get one picture with you? Now, what's fascinating about that is while Donald Trump went through some of his accomplishments, he was cut off by one of the black voters there. And they said, you should check Joe Biden's record from the 90s. Hmm. That makes us go, oh, well, that's good. Interesting. What was Joe Biden doing in the 90s exactly? And it doesn't it didn't take you too long to just go ahead and check what Joe Biden was doing in the 90s. Here is a uh, very unfortunate clip of Joe Biden talking about the evils of crack cocaine. Now, I'm not here saying that it's not evil to use crack. You shouldn't use crack cocaine, okay? I'm saying you shouldn't use it, all right? And I'm not here to promote the sale of it or to, to try and like brush it under the rug. Here's what I'm trying to say, is that if you're gonna sit there and say that there's dual prosecution in our country, and you're not able to, like against Donald Trump, right? And say that this is happening to Donald Trump, this is wrong. Then you should go back to the 1990s and also say the same criticism about black Americans of whom Joe Biden passed laws to lock up hundreds of thousands of them, destroying an entire generation of young black men uh, with a single law, all right, about crack. And why is that particularly uh, odious and evil and cretinesque for Joe Biden to do? Well, because Joe Biden's bragging about how little how much how little amount of crack you have to have on your person to do mandatory five years here yet. And we can't play the clips because it all it, it, we can't play the clips because like it, it's literally restricted because the clips are so grotesque and have so much uh, human nudity and drug abuse in them. But virtually every second of video that you get out of Hunter Biden's laptop is him doing with him with mountains of crack rocks mountains of them. So Joe Biden was bragging about locking up entire generations of young black men while giving his son a pass. And we know his son was first nabbed for crack use or cocaine use. We're not sure because Joe Biden used his political muscle to get his kid out of jail. Hunter Biden was first nabbed for drug use in 1986 when he was 17 years old on the Jersey shore. We have the police report. You don't have the mugshot. That was the first time Hunter got booked in the slammer. And so while his kid is living this lifestyle of mass drug abuse and Joe Biden's muscling, using his political muscle to get his kid out of jail every time he abuses drugs, here's what Joe Biden was doing in the 1990s. If you have a piece of crack cocaine, no bigger than this quarter, that I'm holding in my hand, one quarter of one dollar. We passed a law through the leadership of Senator Thurman and myself and others, a law that says, if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. You get no probation. You get nothing other than five years in jail. Judge doesn't have a choice. Now, the fact of the matter is, We've gone from there. Did you notice, notice that Joe Biden somehow has more hair on his head now? You see, can you, can you, can you get me a frame of that? You can see that you can see the entire bald top of his head. How's that happen? He's more machine than man now. Five years in jail, says Joe Biden. In the era of mass incarceration for everyone but his own son. Who was presumably based on him getting kicked out of the Navy based on his own admission, like a mass drug abuser all throughout school. While Joe Biden was giving that speech, Hunter Biden in his own memoir, bragging about how much crack he did 
how much cocaine he did. Yeah. So it's pretty thin. All right. Pretty thin for any argument for the support of Joe Biden would be pretty thin, about as thin as Joe Biden's hair right there. Yeah. So there is somebody who has been seeing this issue clearly for quite a while. His name is Jack Brewer. He's chairman of the Jack Brewer Foundation. He served under Donald Trump on a commission for the social status of black men and boys. And he's a three time NFL team captain. And we're proud to have Jack join the show now. Jack, we're thrilled that you can be on the program. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we couldn't think of a better person to sort of sound off on th this current moment because we, it's, it's really fascinating to watch the differences between these two men. And it's amazing to see the meltdown when Donald Trump goes into a Chick-fil-A. I, I presume yeah. you've seen that news. Uh, what do you make of it? Man, you, don't forget, Benny, I was the one that said Donald Trump is the first black president and they went crazy. And I'll say it again <laughs> on your show. Donald J. Trump is the first black president, and that's why these black people reacted the way that they do. And that's why uh, you see people like Jimmy Kimmel, uh, who, who, is, who is clearly fake. I mean, he goes into blackface. But you see someone like Jimmy Kimmel get so mad, man, because the truth and the fact of the matter is he doesn't realize it. But Donald Trump actually gave $10 billion uh, in funding to HBCU. So, yes, he can name a bunch of them. The reason why he can is I personally talked to him about it. And Donald Trump tells me the story over and over again about having all of the black presidents from HBCUs come into his office. And after the third year, he said, guys, why do you come in here every year and have to beg for money? You, you guys are prestigious university presidents. You should not have to beg for money. So you know what he did? He gave them long term funding so that they didn't have to come back each and every year. So that seven billion dollars that Joe Biden is bragging about is just the extension of the Trump funds that he already allocated to HBCU. You see, no one will tell you that because they don't know and the left doesn't want you to hear it. That's the reason why I serve uh, for President Donald J. Trump. And that's the reason I call him the first black president, because he actually passes policies that can uplift black people. He wants black people to have green in their pocket. He wants black uh, men to be back in their homes. He don't. He doesn't want a black America that depends on the government uh, and subsidies for everything. He wants people to actually work. And I'll tell you another thing, Benny, you go into one of his hotels or one of his businesses, it's full of black people working from the managers on down. And you ask them, because I have and I do, you ask them how they feel about Donald Trump and you hear stories of him paying for weddings and helping to bury uh, people people who, who, who have passed away. You hear about the genuine man of who he is, which is why I will continue to claim that Donald Trump is the first black president. I mean, that's a really powerful statement there. Obviously, you worked with Donald Trump and you worked very closely with him. Before we move from this topic to a president that says you're not black for saying right. that, uh, I'd, I'd like to ask, like, what was your experience like working with Donald Trump? He must have really cared about you because he appointed you to this prestigious board. You served on that board, but you probably have some behind the scenes understanding that maybe we don't. Definitely, Benny, I'll tell you. So I'm one of the only Trump appointees that actually is still in place. I'm still serving on the, wow. it's, it's actually the Civil Rights Commission and it's the, the Commission on the Social Status of Black Men and Boys. I'll be in DC um, to, to, to do an event there in a few weeks. I'm gonna actually invite you because I'm sure the liberal media won't, won't ever talk about that still being a Trump appointee and a conservative on this commission. Why? Because I've been the leader on fatherlessness and our organization and, you know, backed by President Trump has been a voice for black men and black people. No one wants to hear that. And so, yes, and I, I serve that very proudly. But when you start talking about, you know, President Trump and some of the things that he's done, I mean, I, I, I talk to Duke Tanner um, usually every week uh, and I help him. Duke Tanner is a boxer who was 19 and 0 as a professional boxer, black man that literally lobbied uh, to the Obama administration for eight years uh, to get him out of prison. He was a first time a drug drug seller. He sold drugs. One time offender. They gave him this man a double life sentence for selling drugs one time. And so Trump comes in and what's he do? He pardons him. Right. Same with Lil Wayne and so many others. I wrote and in, 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 in signed off 
on many of those pardons for these black men that have been appealing the Obama administration for years, man. They would never, they would never let them out of, out of prison. And so the First Step Act is something that we're we're really proud of. Why? Because over ten thousand black men have gotten their sentences reduced because President Donald Trump passed the First Step Act. Listen, we all we all commit crimes. My organization works in prisons and jails all across the United States of America. And and if you don't go in and actually rehabilitate people and you just want to lock them up and throw away the key, that's old school, man. Let's get these dads back in our in the houses. Remember, mm -hmm. Benny, we got 18.6 million fatherless kids in America, the most fatherless nation in the world. That's why you see these young black kids in the streets shooting and killing each other. They don't got daddies in the house, man. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump understands that he wants to get these black men. A lot of these black men have their dads in prison. That's not doing them America uh, any good. The making America great again is getting dads, specifically black black dads, back in the house. That's how we make America great again. And Donald Trump understands that, man. And I have these conversations with him, Benny. I think about one conversation I had uh, about five years ago, um, which with, with Donald Trump, I was at his golf course, sitting across from him. He's, you know, giving me shirts and, and, and ordering me food, just treating me like family. It, actually, the picture you're showing right now, that that day, I told Donald Trump, I had just got back from Baltimore, man, where mm -hmm. I did a youth camp. I brought a bunch of black kids in, man, helping these kids and, and just trying to motivate them, man, a lot of fatherless kids. And, and it looked like I was in Haiti or a third world country. Mm. Everything was boarded up. Trash was everywhere. Uh, it was rats running around. This is in Baltimore, Maryland. And I came back and I said, President Trump, we got to do something with Baltimore. I said, it is ridiculous to see an American city that's been a great American city look like a third world country. The next day, he comes out and makes that statement about Baltimore and says we need to clean this city up about the rats and the roaches. And the reason he did that is because I told him about it. He cared. He wanted to do something else. So he starts calling out these liberal politicians that have been leading this, this city for 60, 70 years. It's been under Democratic leadership. And, and these places look like we're going to a third world country. And so people get mad. But that's why he's resonating with black people, because black people want to know the truth. We're tired of, of being poor. Black people are tired of not having enough money to take care of their families and not being able to uh, go after the American dream because we have liberal politicians in these cities just weighing it down and robbing them of everything, man. Yeah. I mean, listen, we I lived in Washington, D.C. for 15 years. We were in Baltimore often. And you you you're right. I mean, it's it, it's saying third world country about Baltimore is, is an insult to third world countries. I've been to third world countries that are much cleaner Right. And much better run than than Baltimore. Uh, it is interesting as you talk about the first step back and as you talk about Donald Trump's uh, heart for this, because you can see where Joe Biden's heart for this is. And when Donald Trump was at that, that Chick-fil-A stop, some of the people there were like, you got to check Joe Biden's record in the 90s. If you check Joe Biden's record in the 90s, he, here, here's, here's the New York Times. Lock that SOB up. Joe Biden in the era of mass incarceration. Then talks about how Joe Biden was the number one proponent of mass incarceration, gave all these speeches on the floor, bragging about how he's going to lock people up for anything, for, for any, if you are caught with a, what does he say? He holds up a nickel and he says, if you're right. caught with a nickel of crack, you're going to prison. Judge doesn't have a choice. Five years in jail, at least. Yet at the exact same time, because we know this, because we've read the autobiography, he was muscling his kid out of prison again and again and again. His white son never went to prison and has yet to see a jail cell for all of his crimes. And some of those crimes include mountains of crack rocks on video. Don't know why the guys had a GoPro strapped to him all the time, but who knows? Who knows, right? Hell of a drug. Uh, what does that say to you that Hunter Biden has never been in jail for crack? It angers me, man. Um, and I get emotional even when I start thinking about this, being to be honest with you, man. When I, when I was eight years old, man, I had to drive up uh, to see my cousins locked up from selling mm. crack cocaine, man. Mm. That, and that's why, that's what fuels my passion of going to the prison. I'd have to go up and see my big cousins, man. One of my cousins did 31 years. The other one did 26 years in prison um, for selling crack. And so I, I saw them, man, and they didn't have dads in the house, man. And and, and they didn't have, um, you know, they didn't have the resources uh, to, to, you know, they were very young. I mean, they, were, they started selling dope when they were 14, 15 years old. You know what I mean? 
and so they lived their life in prison man and it was because of this exact bill man the 1994 crime bill that just slaughtered decimated the black community why because it treated black folks different than it treated white folks if you got caught with the same amount of, of powder cocaine you didn't do you didn't do any of the time but if you got caught with crack you you were just pulling the black men out of the house man and you put that on top of the welfare system that they they put into place uh joe biden is a sick man man i i, I pray for his soul you know you know the, the bible says um vengeance is mine says the lord man and, and the wrath of god is gonna be on this man if he don't do something different i mean benny you talk about his son over and over again committing crimes that my family members or myself man i'd be they'd lock me up in a second if I did anything like like yes. this man has done, you know what I'm saying. And then another thing too, you look at what he's doing at the border; these atrocities, man. I just got back from Haiti last night, man. He's letting these people just flood the border, not just Haitians, everyone, Venezuelans. I mean, criminals. You know how many gangsters? We just caught a gangster uh, three days ago in, in in Haiti. One of the gang members. I almost got to the to the United States of America. These guys that are killing people, man. But he's letting all of these people come into the, the, the country illegally, but he's locking every black man up that he can. I mean, it's um it taxpaying black men, fathers in America. Man, this is this is real, man. The stuff you're covering, Benny, um, is real, man. We we're in some trying times, man. Joe Biden is a sick, sick human being, man. He's a sick he's a sick human being, and it's what what's particularly insulting, I suppose, for the people who live here. Uh, is that it seems like there's a, there's a act there, there's a there it's not doesn't seem like it. he's literally reducing the electoral power right. of the Americans who live here right so so you're reducing you're demographically changing the country forever and and, and it's not me saying that <laughs> by the way uh, it's it's everyone in South Side of Chicago right. every time there's a microphone in the face of anyone in South Side of Chicago from local news to Fox News to corporate news they say you are reducing our electoral power. You are eliminating us. You are replacing our, us as an electorate. That's right. And that that seems to correlate, shockingly, with Donald Trump's spike in approval ratings uh, of black voters. He's doubled for black men and women. Uh, is that what's behind it? No doubt. Uh, black black folks are waking up. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, you think about it, even with this OJ situation. I remember back when you know, we were cheering when OJ got let off. You know, we, you know, we, 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 we watched Rodney King get beat in the streets. And so, you know, for black people, man, we, we, we have been through a lot in this country, man. No one can deny that. And, and, and so for people of my age demographic that have watched and seen this, um, you know, I think it's unique, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 45 years old. So people now like the stuff that's going on with all of the, the pushing of the transgender and then going after our kids and the school system. Now for us to be watching, what's happening at the hands of liberals it's just really eye-opening and that's why you see it start seem to take so long for a lot of people uh to be to, to wake up to this is because we've gone through so much for so long uh and we were trained and taught as 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 kids that republicans were the reason for 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 all of our issues and and black folks are starting to realize that that's just been this big lie right mm -hmm. and i think donald trump is the one that has exposed exposed this and you and you see people coming out uh in droves to support him i mean listen man i was ridiculed for coming out in support of donald trump i mean literally my family they were they were threats and attacks and people coming after me and now all of a sudden it's like everywhere i look like all my friends now are voting for trump and all of my boys <laughs> are voting for trump benny i'm telling you one day i'm gonna for real you, for real one day benny, i'm gonna take you in you gotta come to a prison with me man i'm gonna take you in a prison and let you see all of these guys inside the prison all of them go all of them are trump supporters wow and, and, and it's on i mean it's unbelievable when you start to see the like the most voiceless man it tells you a lot when the most voiceless are supporting uh, a, a president especially like donald trump that's a republican you've never seen this before and the reason why is because people are seeing the results of these liberal leftist policies before you didn't understand it i didn't understand it i didn't understand how welfare right could lead to fatherlessness right i didn't mm -hmm. understand how you know letting the border be flooded could lead mm -hmm. to black black unemployment and could lead yes. for less opportunities for blacks and and could lead to criminal justice uh inequalities and inequities you i didn't i didn't put those things together before and now because of donald trump 
we're able to talk about it, right? Social media and shows like this, they can't hide from it because no one can tell me I don't know what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. I'm in the prisons every week. I'm in the streets every week. I got kids that are that 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 live in in two bedroom apartments, and it's fifteen of them in there that I got to feed every week. I no one can tell me about any of these issues because my organization is touching it, and so this is why they are going to have to deal with this movement, and it's going to become a day in this November. They are literally going to have to put their money where their mouth is because the American people are going to speak. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm going on a rampage this electorate. I will talk and speak anywhere to help stop this madness. I believe God, this is God ordains time for people to speak truth. And we have to stop letting them separate us with skin color, man. We are brothers and this, this country was built on us being brothers and sisters and uniting us, the United States of America. It was a dream and this dream will be fulfilled, man. And I think this is the most important election in this nation's history. Uh, and I hope the black man feels and runs to the polls uh, to, to stand up for our people and for our kids and our, for our future generations. Uh, I think you should just clip, just take that speech, just clip it. Speaking <laughs> of the Trump campaign right now. Okay. Trump campaign. You just take the speech right there. We just did it. We just did it for you. Okay. Don't even, don't need to hire a writer. Don't got to hire an actor. Just put the speech up on TV. That's it. That's all you need. Clip it. Put it up. There's your there's your 30 second, your one minute, your 90 second ad right Man. there. Jack Brewer, we put up the link to your uh, to your, your foundation here. If you wish to obviously go to the Jack Brewer Foundation, we encourage you to do so. Jack is doing such remarkable work. We did want to leave you with one opportunity to comment on somebody um, who clearly doesn't care about skin color, Mr. Jimmy Kimmel, who <laughs> did an entire, he had an entire ongoing skit uh, of an uh, making fun of an athlete, you are an athlete, uh, making fun of Carl Malone wearing full blackface and black body, actually, uh, I, I suppose would be the right term for this. Yet he's the one saying that Donald Trump's offensive to black people. Your comment. Unbelievable. First off, Carl Malone is a patriot, right? Carl Malone is a great man, man of God. You ain't never heard nothing negative about Carl Malone. And so to see this, I mean, listen, if, 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 if a Republican did this, if one of Donald Trump's kids did this, if anyone on the left did this, they would be slaughtered, right? They would murder their name. They would they they would continue uh, continually annihilate them. They never be able to stop talking about it. And for the fact that the leftist media, this is the first time I ever seen this clip. That's sad. That tells you right there exposes their bias. Anybody watching it shows you exactly who these people are. For this not to be. Uh, front and center, no matter who you're talking about, anybody on the right, this would have ended their career. There's no right. way that ABC, NBC, any of these networks, CBS, any of these networks would ever hire a person who did this if they were on the right, right? The view would be all over this. You've never seen this clip on the view. Whoopi Goldberg would be losing her mind if this was anybody on the right. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. These people are hypocrites. The Bible talks about them, man. They, their day's coming, man. It's funny you bring up the view because Joy Behar also did blackface and admitted it, and yeah. she gets a pass as well. It's unbelievable, man. <laughs> she, she said it. it. Not me. She's the one who's like, I darkened my skin to be a beautiful African princess, she says, and she hold, hold, puts up the photo. And yeah. Whoopi Goldberg's like, you did what? <laughs> like, the, again, that's a, that it, the double standard. If there wasn't weren't double standards, there'd be no standards at all. I just find it particularly rich that Jimmy Kimmel accuses Donald Trump of trying to be a black person when Jimmy Kimmel literally has. Here's the Joy Behar blackface. Oh. When Jimmy Kimmel, not a, not a, yeah, like all right, but, great, but great. Hold on, hold on, hold on, one thing, Benny. I mean, the <laughs> legs, though. I've never seen the legs. I mean, come on, the, <laughs> the Jimmy arms Kimmel and legs. I mean, what? How did he even do it? Like, what did he use? To even, I mean, it's unbelievable. Think about the mockery of this guy. He had to be laughing and cracking up inside. This exposes exactly who he is. His hands are blacker as mine. He's blacker than me on there, man. Unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it before in all of my life, man. They would have, anybody on the right, they would have already slaughtered him. The fact that this man has a show that they're pumping millions of dollars, I'm telling what this man makes still and he's never he, he he's never had to pay for any of this ah exposes them and the hypocrites that's right hundreds of millions i mean the way these network shows i mean they're they're millions of dollars per episode so yeah it's it that that's what they're investing in uh but you should invest in jack his foundation you should follow him on social media 
uh, for somebody who actually legitimately is trying to save this country and legitimately doing an awesome work, Amen. ladies and gentlemen, Jack Vinny, Brewer. Vinny, before I go, I yeah, just want to say, man, we've we've been we just got back from Haiti, brother. Uh, literally yeah. last night, man. We've oh wow, we took over 150 Americans out of there, man. We evacuated them. The government wasn't doing nothing for them. I mean, kids. I mean, the stories people people getting kidnapped, right? Babies getting murdered, man, in cold blood. Uh, and it's Americans over there, man. And you know, if this was Ukraine or Israel or something that was that they could make a political statement about, the left would have already pulled them out. Um, but no, they didn't do it. And so we literally had to go there, man. I've been there for three weeks, and uh, it's been crazy. I mean, coordinating aircraft and sending people in and sending armored cars in to get orphans. Um, and, and we got a hundred, 150 Americans out, over 260 people total. Uh, we pulled out of there, man. So I just wanted to say that, man, because, you know, sometimes these things are out of the news cycle and you don't hear about it, man. But uh, we got to keep, man, one America, brother, man. We, yes. we call it Team America, man. We, we, If we all work together, man, we can make this nation great again, brother. I believe it. I'm going to fight for it to the death, man. God bless you, bro. Get on the campaign trail with... Trump. I mean, this is this has been uh, this has been remarkable to hear from you, and 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 what a what a testament that the government can't do this. Yeah. Government can't do this. Can't, government can't go save Americans anymore. Weak men, hard times. Strong men, good times. Ladies right. and gentlemen, that's all you need to know for 2024. Amen. Jack Brewer. Godspeed. God bless you, Benny. Wow. Wow. It's not often that I like that like there's somebody on and it's like you just go wow jack brewer what a rock star take that man on the trail with you donald trump ask benny anything for the week from our benny brigade members from doreen weisberg don't you think that when the three perverts clinton biden and obama are coming out of the granny lift it seems like they are coming out of hell <laughs> Doreen, uh, Doreen Weisberg, Doreen, uh, yes. And we probably can make a meme about that. All right. In the, in the coming days, we will make a meme about that. We will put the, we'll put the hellfire. I'm not sure if we have that clip available of what Doreen's talking about here, but it's hilarious. Yes. It is so funny. They, they have, they're on the granny, they're on the granny chair lift coming up out of the stage, Obama, Biden, and Clinton. And, um, yeah, I mean, not a sing, not a single ankle monitor in sight to keep them away from any schools or any private islands. But maybe, maybe they're just covering it up. Uh, here we go. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Jerry can add some hellfire to all that, some flames. <laughs> all right. Thank you for your question, Doreen. Bobby and Julie, Eric, Eric, Benny, can you please make a bumper sticker and put that in your store? F-A-F-O with two guns uh, at the end of the letters. Thanks, Bobby, Julie, and Eric. Salty Army. We'll be happy to do that, Bobby and Julie. We love with the Salty Army stickers. We this is our salty, this is our salty army mug. This is our logo. The sweet salt tank rolls forward. Bobby and Julie, that's an awesome sticker design. We'll send that to our team right away. Uh Judy uh could see. The Judy could see. I would love to see my senator, John Kennedy, on your show. This is awesome because we've actually been trying to book John Kennedy and we know his people personally. Uh, you can thank him for me personally for his nitty gritty questioning of the grilling of the liberal whack jobs that Joe Biden tries to slip into positions. And please tell him that after Trump, I would vote for him in a heartbeat for president. He's a true Southern gem and a great patriot. He is, Judy. And we like uh, Senator Kennedy quite a bit. And he brings that uh, spicy Louisiana jambalaya and pours it directly into the eyeballs of so many of these uh, silly Marxists, and it is made for TV. Gotta tell you, that's why we use so many John Kennedy clips. If we ever see John Kennedy doing a question, like questioning a lib, we just clip it, put it up, put it up. God bless you, Judy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Benny Brigade is the number one way. Uh, the number, let's take a step back. Number one way you can support our show is just subscribing and watching, okay? If you feel compelled to do something else, you can go to bennyjohnson.com, sign up for the Benny Brigade. Uh, this is $5 a month, keeps us, independent, uh, help support the team and the work that we're doing here, uh, the research and all the content and everything that we are putting up it, like is, we are working like madmen to save the country. 
And we deeply appreciate your support because we don't want to sell out some massive, you know, look, we're not going to, but, but you know, there's, there's these big media conglomerates that come through and they, they try and like grab up and control independent creators. And you see the dr the drama that rolls out with like a Tucker Carlson, for instance. Okay. That's just top of mind. Then we want to stay independent. This helps us do that. So we say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for supporting us. Members of the brigade, the salty army march on second Thessalonians, our verse of the day. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Do you have peace? I hope that you have peace going into this weekend. Uh, peace is such a blessing and we live in uh, tough times, right? You might say, we live in terrible times. How can I have peace? We don't actually, we live in just earth. This is just earth. It's always been terrible here, sadly. Evil is allowed to roam free. How many demons did Jesus cast out? My wife and I are just reading through the gospels, just slowly, methodically, chapter by chapter. Every chapter, there's demons. Every chapter, there's demon possession. How many demons roam the earth? I mean, you gotta think about these things on a spiritual level. And that's over 2,000 years ago, time of Christ. And the world was such a sunken place then, and it's a sunken place now, and it was a sunken place in between. It just sadly, we live in an imperfect world, and sin is what separates us from God. And so the best that you can ask for is the peace of God, actually, in this place. And to not think that, like, you're being you're being particularly persecuted in this time. God actually called you for this time. He's put you here for this time, and he wants you in this time to fight. You should fight alongside us. The victory is ours. March, happy warriors. You cannot defeat an army of joyful warriors. I'm marching right alongside you. It's your boy, Benny. See ya.